Okay, so I already talked about this in my night video, but I don't think I did it justice. And I felt the topic was worth covering in greater detail. So let's take two. So let's start here. The knight making the dark world when Noelle and Birdley were in the room is not a real theory. It's a claim people make to try and debunk Chris Knight. That is the only time it is ever brought up. When I make the claim that it's false, I am not attacking anyone or their theories. The only knight theory this point makes or breaks is Chris. I'm not raining on anyone's parade here, you all came after me first. I'm just debunking the debunk. And if you don't think Chris is the knight, that's fine. If you think some other character is the knight, then this video does not affect your theory at all. So I'm just going to go over each talking point individually. So let's start with... The knight must have hid in the closet and then jumped out and made the dark fountain. The closet dialogue proves it. Okay, so let's start with that closet dialogue. I can understand why people have jumped to this conclusion, but that is not the only possible way to interpret this line of dialogue. Think about it like this. What is the closet in relation to the dark world? It's the city. The closet is the only thing in the room that could be the city. The cabinet is Queen's Mansion, just like how the cabinet was the card castle. The dialogue in my mind is just referencing the events in the dark world, the same way almost every other line of dialogue in the room is. The line about the closet being spacious and full of old electronics is just referencing the fact that the city area is large and densely populated with many NPCs. And the line about how a large person could easily fit inside is just referencing the Giga Queen boss fight that takes place in the city. And it's meant to serve double duty, as on a Snowgrave run where that boss fight didn't happen, that line is now referencing where Chris is going to hide Birdley's body. On top of that, there is another line of dialogue that is much more blatantly referencing the knight's actions. Which is the laptop dialogue which states that someone left it on. Not that Noelle and Burley were using it. If they were using it, the dialogue would have said that. The fact that it just says that someone left it on implies that the knight left it on, but didn't use it, just turning it on and leaving it on the home screen. In a similar way to how Chris turns the TV on to make the TV the chapter boss at the end of chapter 2. Now I know that's not enough to convince most of you, so here is my counter-argument to the original claim. The idea that the knight made the Dark Fountain when Noel and Birdley were in the room is both illogical and impossible. So let's start with that illogical part. If Noel and Birdley were in the room, they would have seen the knight, and would know who the knight is. If they knew who the knight is, then they would have told us who the knight is. And they should have ran out of the room after seeing someone pull out a knife, stab the ground, making a light show, and filling the room with smoke. They had more than enough time to leave the room, the Dark Worlds take at least a few minutes to form. Instead, the theory claims they both just sat there and did nothing. As for the impossible part, Queen recorded the knight opening the fountain. If the fountain was made when Noelle and Birthy were in the room, then they should have shown up on the recording. And, we know that after the Dark Fountain was made, Queen's behavior changed, and she started to raise an army, and that enough time has passed since the making of the Fountain that a resistance group has formed to fight her. If the Fountain was made right before we got there, then there would not have been enough time for all of this to happen. Now I hope you haven't made a comment yet, because now I'm going to be covering the common counter-arguments to these claims, and some other commonly discussed points. What if Noelle and Birdly were sleeping or unconscious when the knight made the Dark World? Not only is it very out of character for them to sleep when they are meant to be doing homework, we also know for a fact that they were awake upon entering the Dark World. Upon entering the Dark World, Noelle and Birdly were attacked by Queen's forces. Their battle was so great, it left craters in the ground. If they were sleeping or unconscious when the Dark World was made, they would have been placed in the Dark World still asleep. We know this for a fact because of the teasers we have seen for Chapter 3. If they were sleeping, Queen would have been able to easily capture them without any resistance. But what if the knight made the dark fountain in the closet and then left the room in the smoke? We actually know more or less exactly where in the room the fountain was made thanks to the Queen's recording of the fountain being made. Which should be right behind where Noelle and Birdley were after the dark fountain was sealed. Because the laptop is Queen and we can assume that the camera used to record the video was a built-in webcam. Which are common in laptops. And based off the logic that the Dark Nerds Light World objects don't move around based on their movements in the Dark World, because if they did then the laptop should be in or by the cabinet, which is Queen's Mansion, which is the last place Queen was when the Dark World was sealed. 
The laptop, of course, is on the table, implying that Darkeners cannot move their Light World counterparts on their own, and that where they are in the Light World when the Dark Fountain is made is where they will be when the Dark Fountain is sealed. Also, keep in mind that Lightners and the items they carry on them do not follow this same logic. But what if there was a camera in the closet that the game didn't tell us about? Almost all laptops have webcams built in. There's no reason to believe that there's a secret camera that the game doesn't tell us about over the one we can safely assume exists. But Noelle and Birdly were sitting down with their books open. Doesn't that imply they were already in the room? First off, they were not sitting down. There are no chairs behind them. When they come back to the light world, they were standing up hunched over the table. Okay, they might be on their knees, but the point still stands. And second, the books are not open. They are closed and stacked on top of each other, in the same way they would be if they were carrying them. If they had walked in the dark world carrying their books, then the books would have turned into some item that they carried with them through the dark world, which explains why the books are placed near them when the dark fountain is closed. Susie and Chris are also standing by the table after the fountain was sealed, if the location lighteners are placed when dark worlds are closed was based on where they were when they entered the dark world, then they should be standing by or in the doorway. Also, if you're wondering why they are asleep when the fountain is closed, it's because Ralsei put them to sleep right after he went to seal the fountain. But what about Ralsei? He said that he sensed the dark world, which is why he went over. Doesn't that imply that the dark world was made right when we left to go to the library? Because if it was made any sooner, he would have told Susie and Chris to go there and seal it? So, it is impossible for the Dark World to have been made in that window of time. You see, the traffic jam had already started. And why does that matter? Because the annoying dog started the traffic jam and then drove into the Dark World. We can encounter the annoying dog twice in the Dark World. Once optionally in the city, and again as a mandatory encounter in Queen's Mansion. In fact, based on how far ahead the dog is, they were probably the first person to fall into the Dark World. So you really can't use the logic stated in the example because Rousey was lying about sensing the Dark Worlds. I'm sure you can think of other reasons for Rousey saying this, where he's not technically lying, but the point about the time the Dark World was made doesn't hold up at all. And on top of this, you really can't use Rousey to argue against Chris Knight, because if Chris is the Knight, then Chris and Rousey are obviously working together. But what about the cancelled animated intro that Toby wanted to do? where Toby talks about the party going up a set of stairs and having the knight at the top of the set of stairs. It wouldn't make sense for the knight to be Chris because then there would be two Chris's. First off, the idea of a main character looking at or meeting another version of themselves in an intro cinematic is literally an anime trope. And second, if any other character was the knight, then you couldn't have this intro without spoiling the whole game, because then everyone would know who the knight is. The only way to have an intro video like what Toby describes is if Chris was the knight, because then when we see them at the top of the stairs, we wouldn't assume that they are the knight. We would just assume that the intro is meant to be referencing the fact that Chris with the soul and Chris without the soul are two different entities. It wouldn't be till after the chapter 2 reveal that we would figure out that it's meant to be Chris as the knight. Now keep in mind that since the intro was just an idea that was left on the cutting room floor, that it ends up not meaning much for either side. But I felt it was worth bringing up because I've seen a lot of people use it as evidence against Chris Knight, even though it's actually evidence for Chris Knight. But how could Chris have gone all the way to the library and back without the soul? Isn't that too far for them? And shouldn't the library doors be locked? And if the library dark world was open all day, how come nobody fell in? I think it's completely possible that Chris could walk to the library and back. They're not that immobile without the soul. The game just shows them walking with a limp. They were able to go and slash the tires and come back in only about a minute. And when they did come back, they jumped through the window. I mean, look at that. They seem pretty mobile to me. And keep in mind, Chris was so tired the next day that they slept through the whole school day. That's a full eight hours, which Alfie's remarks as unusual. And as for the doors being locked, I genuinely believe that they just don't bother to lock the doors. I mean, they never seem to lock the school doors. Alfie's claims that there's no crime, and what is there even worth stealing in the library anyway? I mean, what, are people going to steal the free books? All the computers are 20 years old, the only thing of any worth is the laptop. Like, I would not be surprised at all if they just keep the doors unlocked 24-7, just so they don't have to bother going and locking and unlocking the doors every day. 
Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a line of dialogue from Miss Boom in a later chapter where she says that someone stole the laptop and now she has to start locking the doors again. And, as for no one falling in, the internet is down across town. Who's going to go use the computers without any internet? The only reason why Noelle and Birdley go to the computer lab is to type up their homework on a Word doc. Something that doesn't require the internet. And the fact of the matter is, people did fall in. Namely, Noelle and Birdley. And if you disagree with me on this point, that's fine. Right, this isn't part of the main point of this video, it's just tangentially related, and I felt it was worth covering. The main point is, even if Chris is not the knight, the knight did not make the dark phone when Noelle and Birdley were in the room. That's just not what happened. What happened was that the knight made the dark world in the library, left, and then Noelle and Birdley went to the library and walked into the dark world thinking the lights were off. And the people saying that that series of events is unbelievable, like, no, it's perfectly believable, especially in comparison to the other alternative. If you open a door and the room is dark, there's no reason to believe it's anything more than a dark room. And it's perfectly safe to walk in and turn the lights on. Okay, so the only thing left I want to talk about related to Chris being the knight is the idea that Chris is meant to be a red herring, and that Chris being the knight would be boring. So let's talk about that red herring bit, right? The only reason Chris can work as a red herring at all is because we have to wait five plus years in between chapters. If chapters two through seven were released all at the same time, like how Toby originally wanted, we would likely have some hard confirmation or deconfirmation of Chris being the knight within 30 minutes of chapter three. All it takes is one darkner saying the knight made the dark fountain and boom, Chris Knight confirmed. If they say someone else made it, like if they say the squire made it, then that deconfirms Chris Knight. The only way for it to stay up in the air is for them to only say that Chris made the fountain or if they never acknowledge who made the fountain. The latter being super unlikely and the former still leaning very hard in the Chris Knight deconfirmation territory. Like how long do you think the charade is going to last? All the way till the real knight gets revealed? At that point it would just be super confusing to most casual players. As they're going to be waiting for the answers to why Chris is the knight to get revealed and then the answer is just, oh it wasn't Chris, it was some other random guy. And all of the weird stuff going on with Chris is just completely different and unrelated to the main plot. And think about it like this, we are about 30% of the way through the game so far. And we still need to go over who is the knight and their motives, all of the gasser stuff, all of Noelle's stuff including her dying dad, and her mom, and her MIA sister, and her and Susie's relationship, what's going on with Chris and the soul, what's up with Ralsei and his character arc, and the bunker and festival. And that's just the stuff we know for a fact is going to happen, that's not even taking into account anything that might happen that hasn't been set up. And Toby has to stuff all of that into five chapters. If Chris is the knight, then like half of that list gets wrapped up in a way that is narratively satisfying and is healthy for the game's pace. Having Chris be the knight kills like three to five birds with one stone. And if Chris is a red herring, then we should be able to figure out who the real knight is, with the evidence we have so far, because it's bad writing to have a mystery the audience can't solve. But all the evidence points towards Chris. At best, we can do process of elimination to try and figure out who it is, and that just leaves us with Noelle's mom and maybe Alvin. But honestly, not having a character portrait hurts him a lot. And you know what? I could see it being Noelle's mom. I just don't think it would be as good as Chris being the knight. And there is just no real evidence to support her being the knight. Which is why I really don't understand how anyone can say that Chris being the knight is the most boring answer. Because literally how is Chris knight boring in any way whatsoever. Like they are way more interesting than all the other knight candidates. Like I know you guys are only saying that because you think the knight is meant to be a big whodunit mystery and think Chris is a boring answer because the game just tells us that Chris is the knight. But like if Chris is the knight then the big mystery in the game is not who is the knight but why is Chris the knight. To get a little behind the scenes here, the first video was written and recorded back in January. It was supposed to come out in February, but I got sick and everything had to be put on the back burner until I had time to finish it and make part 2 in a reasonable amount of time. When I was writing that video, there were zero big videos on YouTube arguing in favor of Chris Knight. When I finally got around to finishing it, that number rose to 1. That being Spooky Dude's video on it. And even that one is only playing devil's advocate. 
And I wanted to make this video because I felt that my first video didn't cover the topic thoroughly enough. And granted, that is because when I was writing that video, I intentionally left things out, knowing that people would leave comments about them. A lot of the things I talked about in this video I got comments about in the first video, but every single comment I got was arguing a point that I'd already seen argued hundreds of times before elsewhere. And that's the reason why I wanted to make both of these videos, because of how the discourse around Chris Knight has evolved. A large chunk of the community and fandom believe that Chris being the knight is impossible. And so, if anyone wants to share their Chris Knight theories, they first have to debunk everything I just went over in this video and more in order to even get to the fun part of the actual theory. Because if they don't, then someone's going to show up and be like, um, actually, Chris being the knight is literally impossible. Like, trying to talk about Chris Knight is like playing Tetris, but starting at 70% garbage. And that's really is the thing. All the claims that people make to debunk Chris Knight are just false. And I know where this all stems from, right? People saw the ending of Chapter 2, went, Chris is the knight? That means Chris is the villain! Decided in their mind that Chris being the villain would be bad, then tried to prove that Chris can't be the knight, so they either don't have to think about it, or to make their other theories look better. But I got news for you. If Chris is the knight, that doesn't mean that Chris is the villain. It means that the knight isn't the villain.